Last we saw the champs, they were no showing in New Orleans with Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Andrew Wiggins all sitting. And the Pelicans blowing out the Warriors by 45. Golden State gave up a season high 27 turnovers and the most lopsided results in the entire league so far this season. Dubs back at home Wednesday with the Clippers in town and this just in it helps to have Hall of Famers on the floor. It does and it's it's great to see Clay Thompson is rounding into shape 3D everything is coming together. Mm. Remember the last time we saw him he knocked down 10 threes for his 15th career 40 point game. I don't think we give this Hall of Famers enough credit that they love to share Maddie Smith. Absolutely. And they were rolling against a Clipper team without yes. Kawhi Leonard, without oh. Paul George. Raymond could have laid that in. Around and around we go. Around and around we go. Around and around we go. And it goes in. <laughs> Andrew had to smile on that one. Yeah. Second half, Amir Coffee. Look at the pass to Terrence Mann for the dunk. Nice. Golden State up by 11. Warriors move it. Steph. Come on. We like to move it, move it. Splash. That's a good career move, Andrew Lamb. Yeah, it was. Make yeah. sure you don't take the shot. He has a better shot, wherever he is. Steph with 22 points, nine assists. Here's one. Oh, wait a minute. Andrew is starting to get into the act. He just rocked Zubak to sleep, didn't he? <laughs> Wiggins, six of ten from the great beyond in this game. He had 31. That's a season high for him. Warriors knocked down 19 of their 51 attempts. It's not very often, guys. A team's plus minus improves by 62 from one game to the next, but that's Ooh, what, what happened. 62. Warriors now 8 and 1 at home, and Steph said afterwards, maybe approaching their potential. Like our full potential is when everybody's involved, playing great defense, turning it into easy offense. This guy. Uh, you know, space in the floor, shooting the ball like he is, and the ball starts to move, and we make it really tough on whoever's guarding us. So, starting to show a little bit more consistency with that. We gotta keep putting it together. Brady, 36 assists for the Dubs. Yeah, Matt. I don't think we give this Hall of Fame team credit for willing to share the basketball. Draymond can have the easy layup, maybe get fouled, but no, he shares it. And of course, he's leaving it. He goes around and around and around and goes in. It's Steph Curry. I see you with eyeballs. Yes, Clay Thompson running the floor. Knees and legs are feeling better. Once again, the pick and roll situation, great spacing, hit the paint. And Draymond said, I'll finally score now, Smitty. You mentioned it, Matt, 36 assists. Sharing is really caring. And Steph said, let me get me an easy layup. Warriors, I think you're starting to warm up and starting to get back to who you are. Defense has got to come back to championship yes, level at some point. Boyan Bogdanovich and the Pistons in Salt Lake City, where Boyan played three seasons. Second of a brutal back-to-back -back for the Pistons, who won in Denver on Tuesday before landing in Salt Lake City. With Malik Beasley, all Pistons in the second quarter here. Kevin Ogie. Knox. Three of his 21. Boyan knows these rims well. Jaden Ivey. Hey, fast. He's hey, fast. He's must see TV, it. baby. Lightning quick. He had 16. Detroit up by a dozen Ooh, at the half. Whoa. Marvin that Bagley. Bags? Okay, Bags. The runner and the foul. <laughs> Kelly Olenek can't believe it. <laughs> Bagley had 19. Beasley knocked out. Lee. Beasley. Step back three. And then Beasley, the corner for three. He went for 29. A lot of people can use a shooter. Absolutely. Detroit's lead down to four. Jordan Clarkson goes baseline. Gets the layup. Detroit's lead trimmed to three. Alec Burks, another former Utah player. Savvy vet, been around a while. He had 18 and three rebounds. Pistons become the third team the last 20 seasons to win back-to-back -back games as double-digit underdogs mm. and just the fourth Eastern Conference team over the last 20 seasons to sweep back-to-back -back nights in Denver and Salt Lake City. It's one of the toughest back-to-backs there is. Though weirdly, it's the second time it's happened in the last week and a half. The Knicks did it last week. Go figure. Things are changing. Huh? 125 to 112. So the Celtics have now won 10 of their last 11 games. Here's Tatum on bouncing back from the loss to Chicago Monday night. Losing to Chicago kind of made us regroup, refocus. Uh, and you know, we, this is a really talented team. 
obviously, you know, with Luca the head of the snake. Uh, so it's just good to come back home. It's been a while. Um, get back in the wind column. And, you know, I think we were locked in from the beginning. It seemed like you had a few words for Luca after that, that block. What is the competitive battle like between you two? Early front runners for MVP. Uh, I mean, everybody knows how talented and how special he is. Uh, you know, you can do so many things on the court. And, you know, somebody I respect and like competing against. Uh, and, you know, I, I told him, you know, I had to block it. Uh, he said, do you think I could dunk? I said, you're tall enough. You might have sn snuck me. So, uh, you know, we just have fun with the competing against each other. By the way, the Celtics now 10-0 and all-time when Brown and Tatum each score 30 in a game. Um, it feels like... And they've talked about this. It's a little less of my turn, your turn for those two. There's better offensive chemistry. The numbers show it, and the eye test shows it. It does. You know, the beginning of last season, um, you know, everybody got on Tatum and Jalen Brown about sharing and moving the basketball. That got, you know, that improved tremendously. But I think also when you watch the Boston Celtics right now is they've also added some guys that also – know how to pass the basketball and the spacing and moving without the basketball has just been tremendous as we see on that play. Everybody's in motion. It's a lot of cuts. It's replaced. And this guy Malcolm is one of the best. He's going to drive it extremely hard. And I think 3D and Matt Weiner, Al Horford might be the best hockey assist center in the league because he's going to keep moving the basketball and every now and then he's going to make you pay by shooting a jump shot. Darius Tatum, that used to be a shot. And everybody ran to Malcolm Brogdon because they thought he was open. The spacing has been fantastic. The cutting, the timing has been beautiful. Al Horford, Marcus Smart. That play right there just sums it up where it went inside, it went to the corner, it went to the wing, it went back in, and then a little bounce pass that Marcus Smart could have hit Brown or Jason Tatum for an easy bucket. But also, their assists, they're only like 10th or 11th yeah. you know, with assists but they only fourth in turnover. They are right. not turning it over. How much more difficult will the Celtics be to guard in late-game situations in the spring with this new offensive approach? Extremely difficult, Matt, because they really trust each other. When you watch those highlights now, to Smitty's point, they really understand I have to attack, and that creates so many passing lanes for other people. Hit on the head, Al Horford. I don't know too many center power forwards that can knock down a three and make the quality pass to the next person who has a better shot. It's going to be difficult to stop these guys. They keep this up. By the way, I said 10 and 0 when they each score 30. It's 10 and 0 when they score 68 combined, which is okay. what they did okay. in this game. Luka Doncic 40 for the fourth time this season. First loss of the season for the Mavericks. I mean, typically if he produces like that. They're going to win games, but it's a lot to ask from a guy to have to produce like that. Yeah, Matt, when you watch, look at uh, the stat sheet, Luka takes 28 shots. The next person takes nine. <laughs> so you're asking all these guys to rebound, set screen, do all these things, and, and then watch Luka shoot all the ball. No, Luka, learn from what Jason Taylor and Brown learned from last year, getting all the way to the finals, thinking they need to take all the shots. Now they're sharing, getting other people involved. Somehow, Jason Kidd has to figure that out. Because it didn't win anymore, someone else facilitate a little bit more, get more of other people, make Luka do something else now. Otherwise, you got to reconstruct the team and make it a defensive team, and Luka's the only offense we got. Or maybe it's somebody not on this roster right now. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't see a guy on the roster unless they just start moving without the basketball and not having one guy dominate the ball. Luka is phenomenal. I thought they were a little bit better last year because they played Jalen Brunson and Luka together. And then sometimes it was Jalen Brunson, Luka, and Spencer Dinwiddie. So they had more guys that could break down, you know, the uh, defense. But I think also now most of the guys are catch and shoot or catching live guys. So mm -hmm. as a defensive player, you're only playing the shot just to get back to contest. I'm not running back to you, Matt, saying, is he shooting it? Is he driving it? That was the difference, I think, last year's team versus this year's team. All right, moving on. The road boos weren't nearly as tough as the home team for the Nets on Tuesday night. Ben Simmons survived his return to Philly, played reasonably well, but the Nets just couldn't stop the undermanned 76ers, who dominated the boards and hit 16 of 32 threes to beat Brooklyn by nine. And yeah, they liked it, which is kind of what Kevin Durant expects on the road. Well, that's an every arena. Everybody wants to see our team fail. Nobody likes Ben. Nobody likes Kai. Nobody likes myself. So it might be like that in every road arena. You know what I'm saying? So it's just something we got to deal with. That's in Toronto. That's uh, Jack Armstrong going with the Drake stuffed animal jacket. <laughs> Looks good on him. Yeah. 
Ooh, ben this is Ben starting, Simmons. Really yeah. like the ben of old. Starting to see signs, right? A little more aggressive. Royce O'Neal with the rebound. Outlet to Durant for the dunk. Brooklyn up by nine. Gary Trent Jr. here on the other end. And then Thaddeus Young. Great catch. Raptors still without Pascal Siakam, and we're without Fred Van Vliet in this game as well. OG Ananobi okay, OG. with the big finish. Okay, Durant, I'm coming at you. Mm -hmm. Hit 15. One point game at the half, third quarter. Ben Simmons, playmaker. Oh, that's nice. He's moving better. Yes. Just the way he's running. Just there, this response for the Brooklyn Nets is what I was waiting for. After you lose a game like that, what would be their response? Durant pushes it. Kyrie delivers. And then Irving with the step back jumper. He had 19. And it's a 15-point Brooklyn lead. Kyrie steps into a three. 11 of 16 from the field for his 29 points. And this looks